This is the Minuteman Intercontinental Ballistic Missile. It plays a large part in the Strategic Air Command Arsenal of Defense for North America. 1,000 of these missiles are on a 24-hour alert throughout the northwestern and midwestern portion of the United States. These are located at Maelstrom Air Force Base, Great Falls, Montana. Minot Air Force Base, North Dakota. Grand Forks Air Force Base, North Dakota. Ellsworth Air Force Base, Rapid City, South Dakota. Francis E. Warren Air Force Base, Cheyenne, Wyoming. And at Whiteman Air Force Base, near Knob Noster, Missouri. Most of these bases also support the tremendous B-52 strategic bomber fleet an important part of our North American Defense Force. These B-52s, combined with the Minuteman Missile Complex, represent the most powerful deterrent force in the world, always on the alert to provide instant retaliation in the event of enemy missile attack. The B-52 and Minuteman defense weapons are quite complex. In most cases, their equipment and load are classified they must be constantly protected against any effort to dull their instantaneous reaction capability. Consequently, the B-52 bombers are diligently guarded around the clock by the Air Force Security Police, using standard, traditional protective measures. But when they protect the Minuteman missiles, well, now that's another story. The Minuteman missiles are widely dispersed. Each of the bases previously mentioned has up to 20 launch control facilities, buried almost three stories underground. Each of these control facilities controls 10 Minuteman missiles, located in secure, unmanned launch facilities placed from 4 to 40 miles around the launch control facility. These unmanned sites are protected by a highly sophisticated surveillance system, which is monitored on a 24-hour basis by a missile combat crew composed of two officers stationed at each launch control facility. The missile combat crews work deep in the ground, behind blast doors that weigh almost eight tons, which gives adequate protection and maintains their capability of launching the missiles in the event of enemy missile attack. Each combat crew member is issued an individual combination which opens the safe containing the missile launch keys. The crew must function jointly to accomplish their particular part of the overall missile launch program. They continually monitor the surveillance system that protects the 10 missiles, as well as the immediate area around each launch facility. Inside the fence at each launch facility, there are outer zone radars which can detect any object weighing 50 pounds or more should the object penetrate the electronic field. The system is so sensitive, any unauthorized movement is immediately known to the combat crew. In addition to the outer zone protection, there's an inner zone tamper-proof seismic alarm system within each launcher. Any unauthorized weight, vibration, or tampering can trigger the alarm system and thus warn the combat crew at the control site several miles away. When launch control and launch facilities are protected by such a sophisticated system, the logical question arises, why do they need security police? How do they fit into the security system? Well, the security police furnish the muscle. They give armed protection to back up the unmanned electronic system. They guard and protect a facility should the electronic system have a malfunction. Here's how it's done. At each launch control facility, there's a security police flight security controller in an office above ground. When the combat crew below receives a penetration signal on the console, they immediately notify the security flight controller. The SP controller quickly summons the alert team, poised for immediate response. These trained alert teams need only a short briefing before their quick departure to a penetrated site.
duty with a security alert team is one of the several assignments available to a missile guardian. The job starts when a team is assigned a 48-hour tour at the launch control facility. The SAT team member has issued his M16 weapon in 54 rounds. The team leader has issued the necessary sidearms. The alert team stands regular guard mount with other security police going on duty. then transported to the launch control facility where they're assigned their patrol vehicle. During their 48-hour tour at the control facility, the team patrols each of the 10 missile launch sites on a prescribed basis, during which they carefully check security conditions. However, when on standby between patrols and alarm response, they may read, watch TV, or study as the urge demands. Between duty shifts, the alert teams sleep in rooms at the launch control facility. Actually, they constitute a reserve force, should the need arise. At each of the launch control facilities, there's always a cook on duty, ready to prepare a wide selection of hot meals from the excellent menu. But when responding to a penetration alarm, it's all security duty. It's important that the alert team make sure of the cause of the alarm and check the overall conditions at the launch site. If their investigation reveals a hostile act, the alert team must use the minimum force necessary to protect the missile. And furthermore, under no conditions can they terminate the security response until authorized by the combat crew. However, when unforeseen events requires that the alert team must protect the launch facility for an extended length of time, security operations at the base has provisions for relieving the team within a reasonable time. The provisions for relieving the alert team provide another job assignment available to a missile guardian. That is, duty with the camper alert team. The camper team stand by at the main base, ready to be dispatched to a launch facility to take over guard duty and remain as long as the missile needs manned protection. At times, the camper missions may last as long as two days and nights. However, these missions are not as uncomfortable as they sound. Each camper is well heated and fully fitted out. There is a comfortable bunk, a refrigerator which is stocked with sufficient food, and a stove for fixing hot meals. When the camper alert team guard mission is completed, the camper is returned to base. Usually the off time earned by a team on extended guard duty is equitably adjusted in accordance with the time spent in the field. A missile guardian can also draw a duty assignment as a security escort or as a member of a security escort team. An example of this duty is escorting a maintenance team whose work requires them to penetrate the inner zone alarm system at the launch facility. All entries to the inner zone are stringently controlled. Precise pre-dispatch administrative steps using a Form 658 must be followed. The maintenance mission and site entry must be requested by an authorized agency. Usually, wing job control notifies the security police dispatcher of an impending maintenance mission. Immediately, the dispatcher selects the proper escort. The entry request, the maintenance team, and the assigned escort are then authorized and the mission verified as valid. The Keys and Codes Control Center then verifies that each listed individual is authorized to perform a site penetration, after which the codes to be used are entered on the Form 658. In the meantime, the escort selected draws the required M16 weapon and ammunition. He is then briefed by the police dispatcher. 
Sergeant Pallas is the team chief. It's a combat targeting type team. Estimated departure at 10.30. Here's your checklist. Here's a hard hat. You have an M16 with 54 rounds. Sure do. Have you picked up codes yet? No, I'm going there after I do this. Okay, now let's try the practice combination on this A circuit. As the final step in the pre-dispatch phase, the escort and maintenance team appear at the Keys and Codes Control Center. Maximum security prevails. Each man is issued entry information under distinctly separate conditions. This separation of information and material is essential to the Minuteman entry control system. At one window, the identity and authority of the escort are verified. At a different window, the maintenance team chief is also verified. The escort is issued his individual code called the A code. No other team member will know this code. The maintenance team chief is also issued his individual code plus the keys to the facility to be visited. The maintenance assistant is separately processed and given his private code. These codes are known as the B codes. When all pre-dispatch processing is completed, the Keys and Codes Control Center passes the identity and code information to the launch control facility involved. This phone call is authenticated to the flight security controller to ensure verification of the caller. The escort and team must take a predetermined route to the site. Transportation control requires that a periodic report be given at designated points along the route. These reports prevent unauthorized deviations or stops along the way. Upon arrival at the unmanned launch facility, the visitors are required to request permission of the security police flight security controller before entering the outer zone. The next requirement is that each member authenticates individually using the telephone in the support building. The maintenance team individually authenticates with the combat crew using the B code. The team chief is given the B combination for entry to the inner zone B plug. The escort authenticates with the flight security controller using the A code. He is given the A combination to open the security pit unit. The escort using the A combination opens and removes the security pit vault door.
This allows the maintenance chief to release the primary access door to the launcher. It should be noted that periodic time delays are purposely built into the security plan. The purpose is to provide sufficient time for a security alert team to respond should any unauthorized procedure occur during the entry. When the primary access hatch is fully opened and secured against premature closing, the maintenance chief descends into the opening. The assistant remains topside in a position where he is not able to observe the maintenance chief below while he is dialing the B combination to open the inner zone secondary door. During the entire maintenance period, the escort maintains positive security control to protect the exposed missile. Although the security procedures may vary slightly within the different bases, you have seen the basic duties of security escort. However, there's more to the overall escort function, Correct. and that is assignment to convoy escort duty. The purpose of this convoy is to transport a priority A resource from the support base to Juliet 7. Use of deadly force will be as a last resort and upon my direction only. Deadly force will be used to protect the priority A resource against attempted sabotage, espionage, and theft. It will also be used to protect the lives of the members of the convoy and to... Because the priority A component of the Minuteman is vulnerable during transport on public roads, its trip from the base to its launch facility requires maximum security procedures. In fact, this applies to all priority A cargo movements. Basically, the Minuteman convoy appears to be a normal military movement of three vehicles using traffic escort furnished by the local police. But appearances are misleading. The lead vehicle following the police car contains the convoy security commander and two security police escorts. Under their protection is the van carrying the priority A cargo. This van is also protected by an alarm system. In trail is the slow-moving maintenance van containing the maintenance personnel. Also riding in the van are two additional security police guards. As an added security measure, the convoy commander must make periodic radio position reports to pinpoint the exact location of the convoy while en route. To make certain of the overall security position of the convoy, a reconnaissance helicopter furnishes air-to-ground surveillance during the entire trip. Each vehicle has specific identification numbers painted on its roof to ensure immediate recognition. While the convoy is en route, another backup helicopter remains at the base where a four-man security police team stands alert, ready for immediate departure in case additional armed support is requested. If an unusual event makes it necessary for the convoy to halt, the security police quickly establish a national defense area. It's an area temporarily under United States government control for purposes of national defense. In this case, the priority A cargo. The convoy commander must contact wing security control and report the temporary halt and the circumstances surrounding it. When the convoy arrives at the launch facility, maintenance personnel immediately start installing the priority A resource. During this installation period, 
The entire area remains under strong security police guard. It should be understood that the security measures discussed are not individual unit actions, but are part of the overall security program, monitored and coordinated at wing security control. This is the nerve center of all security measures throughout the entire Minuteman missile wing. That's about it, insofar as on-duty activities are concerned. Off-duty time is something else. The free time program of a Minuteman security policeman is quite liberal, and there are many things to do, both on base and off base. It's your time, and it's your choice. been given a general description of assignments available to newcomers to the Minuteman Security Police Force at a SAC missile base. The carefully patterned security measures required to protect this modern arsenal of the missile age have been strongly emphasized. Whatever task the new missile guardian draws, security alert, camper alert, escort, or convoy escort, is it?